I am back with the next uh, episode of this quilt covered journal and we're journaling together. There are quite a few of us in the Little Birdsong community who are working in these journals. I've been away, but let me show you one of the reasons. I'll just give you a little sneak peek of a custom journal I'm working on. It's almost done. I love this thing. Oh my goodness. It was an order from someone and I just have loved working in that. I've had quite a few custom orders lately and I just, I decided to dig my heels in and not let up until the custom orders were all done. And I'm working on pretty much the last truly custom order. Now I do have requests for some other things. There is someone who wants a big blue journal and there is someone who requested a cover, just a particular cover, and there is a request for a boho birds. So and those things are on my list as well. And I definitely want to do justice to this series we're working on together. But the custom journals that I felt like I needed to finish up, those were either paid for and you know, there were just kind of some specific guidelines or they had deadlines for things like retirements or baby showers. As you can see, I'm talking and working at the same time. I want to show you something that I did in one of my custom journals. And I thought it, thought it turned out really, really neat. So I just want to show you real quick. And I know we probably need to move on from the alcohol ink. These alcohol inks I purchased just for this uh, quilt covered journal with me because I promised that I would try new things. I can tell you I won't be without these. I have loved these so much. They've been great for just putting spots on pages, like if you want something to look aged. They're wonderful for staining things. Let me show you one of the pages in this, uh, this custom journal that I'm working on. So there is one of the metal prong fasteners here at the top, and it's been stained with this uh, Tim Holtz alcohol ink. This color is espresso, and it is just, I love the way that you can use it to stain non-porous surfaces. This was not that expensive. You get two bottles in a pack, and oh my goodness, I stood there for the longest time in Michael's trying to figure out which bottle to choose. And I finally chose these two because, of course, I do the big blue journals, and this color is called Pool. And I love aged, distressed, sort of, you know, that look. So I figured I would really love the espresso, and I do love it. So I know we need to get away. I've got some other things I want to try in this journal. Now, I'm not sure what page everybody is on, but... <laughs> I glued two pages together because the journal's getting kind of thick and I want to not have it be so full that it's like a fan, you know? So, and I kind of, I don't remember if I did that by accident and then thought, oh wow, that's actually really great. So this beautiful alcohol ink made a wonderful tree. And watch how it just spreads it makes these gorgeous, gorgeous branches. So I took a page, just a plain old page, and used some Mod Podge to put down a layer of tissue paper. And now I'm just putting some branches in. And you know, the more you tilt the bottle, the more that's gonna come out. Whew. Isn't that beautiful? I just, I love it. Let me show you the page that, let me show you the page that I did in the custom journal. And see how it pulled the distress ink from underneath? Now, this looks a little different. We can keep working on it. And it may be because the, uh, it may be because the, um, I can't think, the Mod Podge underneath is still a little bit wet, but I just love that sort of wild tree look. Let's try to control it a little bit more. <laughs> so much for that, okay. 
so we have kind of our wild tree. You just have to overlook how wild the branches went. I honestly think it's because the page is wet underneath, but please remember to just try new things. I want you to be able to just craft with abandon. That's what this has been all about. That and making sure that we include writing in our journals. Another thing I like to add is some dimension to the page. And I think if you try it, you will really like it as well. I know a lot of you already do this. But we've got some moss here. Just some, it's, people use this in little uh, fairy gardens and that kind of thing. Uh, I've just put some glue underneath this. I love my tacky glue. And I love the fast grab. It does grab really fast and it dries clear. So I think that's going to work. And I have an idea that I think will be really, really cute. And these things don't have to take very long. I'm not sure if we want any around the tree or not. Maybe just a little bit around the, the trunk. And we're going to make a mess on the craft desk. And then we're just going to clean it up. And we're going to have a journal page that we will love. So the tree came out a little wild. I just can't leave it alone. I want to figure out... Oh, I think part of it is this paper. I just don't understand why it's not doing. Oh, look, that's better. It still looks like a tree, but I wanted those long, long willowy branches like I got earlier. So let me just tell you while we're doing this and, and while you're seeing this happen, this is a page in my art journal. I didn't practice ahead of time. I want you to see exactly what I get because this is about not being afraid to journal and it's about journaling every day and being happy with what you're learning and also putting words down. Now the second thing I want to show you, I've cut out these little mushrooms and I will give you a link to the site where I get a lot of my images. Uh, it's called Vintage, but it's spelled a little differently. It's V-I-I-N-T-A-G-E. And the link will be down below in the description box. But I am going to just glue these little mushrooms on that I cut out carefully. I guess that's called fussy cutting. I really think this is almost empty. Ay, ay, ay. Maybe that's enough for now. So let's glue down our little mushrooms. I'm just going to put them right over the text of this page. Have the little grass coming up there and a tree that looks like an explosion of fungus in the forest. That's okay. That's okay. We can live with that. So we do want to get some writing onto this page. So let's brush away this excess um, flat moss. I don't want you to think that it has to be a mess forever if you use this. It doesn't. This is sheet moss. That's what this is. Sheet moss. There, the glue's finally back at the bottom. I keep my bottle upside down in a little jar. Just one of those little uh, wee yogurt jars. And I had taken the glue out and forgot, I had forgotten to put it back in there. So while we're thinking, I don't believe distress ink is gonna hurt anything. So let's just distress these pages a little bit. And I'm gonna figure out where I wanna put my text. And sometimes messy is good. Now, we don't want it on the mushroom, but it's going to be okay if it runs over into the next page. And we have little spots, kind of rogue spots, you know, but let's try to keep it off the mushrooms because we want those to feel like they're really in the foreground. Never be afraid to glue two of something down. If you want to add a little more dimension, Yes, it means a little bit more cutting, so I cut out two sets of these mushrooms, and thank goodness my glue is all back at the dispenser end of the bottle. 
but I am going to just glue another set of these mushrooms right on top of the first ones. And you can kind of see how that gives it. It's almost like some of those fancy cards you can buy with the little pop-ups or whatever. And get that glue off of there. So I do really like that. And once the gesso is dry, we're gonna be able to journal on it. Everything is completely dry on this page. I tell you something I did. I pulled off the sheet moss that looked like it was just gonna come loose because I really don't want a mess. I like for things to be pretty and I like sort of messy pages sometimes, but I don't want this falling out all over the place. So I did pull out the pieces that weren't hanging on to the glue or uh, entangled in the rest of the moss. And what is the date? It's May 7th. So let's go ahead and put the date up here. And I'm going to put my entry in. One last thing, it is important to always sign and date things. I don't always remember to do that because it's my journal and I feel like, you know, everybody knows who did this. But my sister-in-law tells me, well, she's not quite my sister-in-law, but I just, let's call her that for simplicity's sake. She always says, date and sign everything. So here's my simple page with my wild, wild looking tree. It does look like a tree. I've seen trees that look that way, especially the massive, huge oak trees in my grandmother's yard years ago. And it's okay. This is our journal page. It's all done. It was quick and we got some writing done. So try something like this in your journal. I want you to be able to try new things and be happy about it and not be afraid to mess up. So please let me know if you would like for me to try something in particular. I'm happy to try new art products and to tell you what I think about them. Until next time.